everyone. I'm Stuart Fishman. This is Web Yeshiva. And this is the first of two sessions on how to make a sukkah. A sukkah has two. First, it's actually interesting that whoever picked out the slide, um, the sukkah in this picture has non rigid walls. That itself is like a big, big, big question that actually we're going to talk about today. A sukkah has two parts, has walls and has a roof. The roof is called schach because the roof of the sukkah has very, very, very specific rules. The walls also have specific rules. And today we're going to talk about the walls. And before you can even talk about the walls of the sukkah and the roof of the sukkah, there's another question which really needs to be talked about, especially as more and more people live in cities and they're not living in houses with a backyard, which is how a lot of people used to live. That's where can I put my sukkah? Where can I put my sukkah? Classically, I mean, if you grew up either in New York or here in Israel, in a house that had a yard, you put your sukkah in your yard, on your property. And that's really an important halacha. The sukkah cannot be, you have to have permission to put the sukkah where you're putting it. Um, I've seen sukkahs in Israel built in parking areas. Good question. Do you, have, do you have to get permission from your neighbors to put the sukkah there? It's like, before you even think about the lachas of where and what and who, where are you putting the sukkah? Are you putting it on your property or not? And if you're not putting it on your par property, do you have permission to put the sukkah there? Um, I found something on the internet. Where did it go? Hmm. I thought I downloaded it. I know I downloaded it. I know I downloaded it. Now I can't find it. This isn't it. I feel bad. It's from the city of Yeriyat, and Israel is a city called Givat Shmuel. And the city of Givat Shmuel, they actually have a, you can go to the Yeriyat, the city's website and download a permit to build a sukkah in a public park, which is really probably very, it, which is very important. But here's the Shulchan Aruch. How come I can't find anything? Ooh. Okay, and the Shulchan Aruch says, it's in Tafrish, Ahmed Zion. Okay, we can do it from the Aruch HaShulchan. Now I feel bad. Hold on. I, I, I really... I'll do it from the Aruch HaShulchan. Okay. Here it is. Sif Hay. Calls him in the Evid. Olachatkila lo yeshev on the Basukas Havero Somitato. You have to have permission. Wait, if I, I cannot just go into someone else's sukkah and sit there. Okay. And if a person, if, okay. And you can assume it that maybe he doesn't mind, but you shouldn't go into a sukkah without permission. Okay. The college can't you ask the chatchila so sukkah bachabesh midato in karka shal rabin. Public property. You cannot just lachatchila put your sukkah in a park. 
all right, or, or on your neighbor's property, unless you have permission, okay? And but the Eved, if you do put your sukkah in the street, you can even make a bracha on it. But really, you have to get permission. Okay, it's very, very important. Get permission from, if you're gonna put your, so if you're gonna do what this gentleman did, where did it go? You suck in the parking lot, get your neighbor's permission. Get your neighbor's permission before you do this. Now, there's an interesting idea, which is in the Piskech, which is in, This is from our Sternbach and his Jewish friend Hagos. Well, putting a sukkah in the street. With not sukkah, Mokam Shazim, not Vlicho Kereshut. Building a sukkah where the local authorities say you can't build something. Okay? For example, um, I keep going back to this parking lot. You just, can I just plunk down a sukkah in a parking lot? So, Rav Sternbach says this. You built your sukkah in a place where the city's ordinances say you cannot build a sukkah. And, you can, and sometimes, every now and then, tragically, there are, you know, People just put up sukkahs randomly in on a on a on a ballot what Zebo called them your pesed on a on a porch and can fall down. I mean, look, you look at this sukkah, and I mean down here on the ground, you're okay. But that sukkah that's up there, the city might say, I want a building inspector to see that this whatever is holding the sukkah up. I mean, that's the edge of the balcony of the building. And look how far out this sukkah projects. It's sitting on metal rods. And those metal rods go down to this metal rod. I don't know where that metal rod goes down to. The, engines, the city, the city employs municipal engineers to make sure that things are safe. And is that sukkah kosher? Okay. Or people have fire escapes. They build a sukkah on their fire escape. If you, you, your, your fire escape is supposed to be clear so people can run out of the building in a fire. You can't build something there. If you if you build something where it's illegal to build, you're building on land that isn't yours. So that magen avam, the yevet sukkah shera. Yet we send the shulchan also. But the yevet, for various reasons, that really can't get into. It's okay. But the yevet, it's okay. If I build a sukkah on land that isn't mine, it's okay. I don't. We're not going to mitzvah by Vera. It's okay. All right. And you can't, you don't make a bracha. And some people say it's, I mean, and maybe she has gone to some of the yashivs at all. Shabona, sukkah makon, el yashvis, chashash kezel. If you build a sukkah on property, there is, it's, you're not allowed to build on period. That might be gezel. Might be an act of theft. Okay. In Kasev, it should be all Yosef. People say it's not theft. So, Rav Sternbach goes on and he, he makes distinctions between if it's the city objects to it for aesthetic reasons or because if it's truly a hazard. And he goes on and on and on. But it's something he says, how can you build a sukkah in a street? Even if all my name, even if all the 
Jewish neighbors agree, and the Margarita from some the Jew he was running in Poland. The Poles certainly don't want to see Jews putting up their sukkahs in their streets. And he goes on, I can say something now in Eretz Yisrael. I can say something now in Eretz Yisrael. Also, the sukkah Meshu Sarabim. I would say it's us that put the sukkah in the street. And the Chavshim Meshu Meshu Sarabim. There are the non observant Jews are also, it's their street also. And they're not waving their right to the street, so you can put up a sukkah. And again, I go back to the parking lot. The parking lot is not your personal parking lot. The parking lot belongs to everybody. Everybody has a right to park. And if I put a sukkah here, I've taken away their right to park a car there. By what? How am I allowed to take it with the price of someone of their rights so that I can do a mitzvah? Now, everybody in the city is observant, and I'm, I'm permitted to assume that they're happy to see that someone's doing a mitzvah with, with, their, with their public property. But in a large city, when not everybody is observant, who, I, I can't, that's not a valid assumption. Okay? So he wonders about this. So he goes on. In came b'makushav ne'am akam imokirei dot mechalis with them nesafai love like I live in a fraud. Well, most the vast majority of people who live in a fraud are observant Jews. I may safely assume that my neighbors will not object if I would put a sukkah in the street where they're parking their cars. Okay. I can, it gets considered a valid assumption of halacha. Okay, Mikamak, but if I, if I was a city, if there's a, if there's a minority that aren't willing to waive their rights, I could say the majority rules. No, they're not the, determining halacha. It's a, this is a question of rights. Everybody has property rights, Miss Mann. It's not that they're determining the halacha. I have to take their feelings into account. Only oh, unmute you. Yeah, I'm not the uh, Miss Man. It's not that they're determining the. I need to if, if not everybody if, let, if in this street. I don't know where the street where this picture was taken. If there are people in this street who are mechalay shabbat chalila, they have a right to the street also. They have a right to put their car here. They have no, I don't have a right to deprive them of the ability to park a car by putting up this structure for seven days in a parking lot. You understand? I, Hello? Yeah, I guess. Uh, yes. I guess see, some, some, something bothers me about it because, you know, there's different, I can think of different uh, areas in Valaha where we presume that, you know, we presume like a reasonable standard of a Jew that wants to keep halacha. So, no, this is proper. This is property law. Yeah, sure. This is proper. This is purely a question of property law. Yeah. Okay. Now, there, there's a, there is an assumption that it, uh, let's say, for example, I leave my sidur in shul. Someone else can use my sidur if they watch it carefully and they put it back. Because there's an assumption that people are happy to know that their property is you being used to do a mitzvah. Huh. But can I really make that assumption if I put my sukkah in this parking area? Can I assume that the non-observant Jews who also live in my city are they are they willing to waive their use of this parking spot for seven days? And especially parking is hard to find parking sometimes. It's not a valid assumption. Hmm. That's all. Well, the I guess a, a park may be a better thing to think about because like a parking lot is designated for a car. So I can right. see that even even if an, in a religious but uh, a park is really you know designated for people's enjoyment. So 
you're not really with a park. What are you depriving somebody of doing? Like, if, you know, if you put it in a park, like what's well, the, the park? It's, they have a right to walk there. I took away space. They, they take this. This is taken very seriously in the post game. I've taken away okay. space. For okay. example, um, there's another picture here, um, and that's what I was kind of was hoping to find that letter, this, this form from the area of Kivat Shmuel. Kivat Shmuel actually has this very well done. If you want to put up a sukkah in the park, you fill out a form, and they'll either give you permission or not. You tell them where you want to put the sukkah. Like here, here's a sukkah on the beach. I'm the, probably about the sukkah this big. I don't know if this is Yafo. Where I don't know where this is. Might be Yafo, Ako. I don't know. I see stone buildings. They probably had to get. They probably got whoever built this sukkah had to get permission. Okay, and I feel bad. I don't find the, and like it's Givat Shmuel. They have a form. Oh, it's an interesting form. I wanted to just show it to you. Suk Paka Gzelat Givat Shmuel. Permit. I, I, I'm not going to waste people's time. I really don't want to waste people. I, I don't want to waste people's time. But that's it. That's the first I want to talk. You have to get where are you putting your sukkah? If you have your own yard, that's nice. If you live in a building, in a, like an apartment building, the Agudal that is in Israel. I'm speaking about Israel primarily because I live in Israel. There's something called the Ogudala Taputa Diyur. They organize like the real estate laws. Uh, the rules for people for people who live in apartment houses, how to get along. And they have, let's see, stuck in the yard. They have a form to fill out also. If you want to put this, if you want to put your, your sukkah in the building's parking lot. They have a form that you have to fill out to get permission. If you get permission, you can put the sukkah there. If you don't get permission, then you're depriving people of their space. And that's just wrong. Okay, that's just the first thing I want to get, get across. Where do you put your sukkah? Okay, you have to put a sukkah where you have permission to put a sukkah. The Rafavadi Yosef and his Yalkut Yosef that I have here, where did it go? Where's my Yalkut Yosef? He has like a summary of the rules for building a sukkah. Okay. A sukkah to Hal Yotzah Mishal Shtefano Bishach. Three walls with schach. Tefano Tehem Kotlei Asukah Mechitzotel. Three walls. So I mean, call the bar made within a roof. This is very important. A sukkah has to be stable. It's, and, the, and the Gemara's phrase for stability is it stands in a wind. The wind's not going to make not, and it's not just that the wind is not going to blow it down. The wind won't shake it. And Moshe Feinstein both objected to Sukkot with cloth walls. Yeah. And when I look at this picture. I wonder if they would have approved, or if Moshe Feinstein or if Adiyasi would have approved of this sukkah. Now, a lot of people, like the classic wooden sukkah, all right? I mean, if this is your sukkah, then you have, a, you have to have a place to put these walls when sukkah is over. And people who live in apartments don't have storage room for these kinds of walls. So there is a huge demand based on necessity. This is just like, I don't know why the website's so difficult today. Uh, the Arabs. I don't know why they're giving me grief with opening up the files today. Uh, so you go back to here, cloth walls. So these pipes so here, these Sukkot they have cloth walls, ideally, and they're different companies that market. In Israel, prefabricated Sukkot are a huge industry. The best Sukkot, if you can use a cloth wall, 
is to buy this frame that has these metal bars. And these metal bars create something called, there are four bars. I'm counting the bottom one. One, two, three, four. They create something called lovely. And I'll put that on, I'll, I'll write that out for you because it's really a very important term on Sukkot. I'll just, I'm typing in. Lavud. This is called Lavud. Are you all familiar with Lavud? Have you heard that phrase before? Yes. Has anyone not heard of Lavud? Okay. Maybe some people listening don't have never on the on the archives have never heard of Lavud. Yeah, no, Lavud, I did not hear that. Yeah. What? I have not, I haven't heard of this. Okay, Lavud. Okay, there. It looks like the sukkah that we got. That That's has... it. I'm going to tell you why this is good. Okay. There are different kinds of sukkot on the market. The best, a wall has to be solid. Okay. And again, let me go back to the wooden sukkah. This is my wooden sukkah. There. That's, these are walls. That's a wall. That's a wall. Okay. This is solid. This is solid. There's a halacha of Moshe Messinai. This is a halacha that's, halacha Moshe Messinai means it's no, you can't find a pusik for it, but it works. Mean a Torah, like my tefillin are black. The Torah just says, doesn't say what color to make the tefillin. The ritzuot of my tefillin are black. Doesn't say that anywhere in the Torah. It's halacha Moshe Messinai. That's how Hashem taught Moshe to make tefillin. That's what Hashem told us. I need a wall. I need a wall that's not going to move in the wind. This sheet and this wooden sukkah, this is not a wall. Why isn't it a wall? Because it's going to move in the wind. It's, there's a sway to it. This is, this is a wall because it stays in its position. I go back to the slide from the shear. This cloth is not a wall. And with Moshe Feinstein and Rabbi Vlad Yosef, both say, even if I tie it to the top frame and I tie it to the bottom frames, it's not going to blow away completely. The fact is that it moves in the wind. It moves in the wind. That's not a wall. What's the wall and the best collapsible, foldable Sukkot? I got to go back here my frame, these metal bars. These metal bars don't move in the wind, correct? Metal bars don't move in the wind. Metal bars stay where you put them. If I have four metal bars within a given distance, and that given distance, according to Rob, mm -hmm. is called the Gemara. What? I heard someone talk. Someone say something? And any question? Are you all with me? Yes. These metal bars don't move in the wind. If I have, and they're within a space called tent fachim, and Rabbi Vadi Yosef says that the tent fach, and tefach is eight, is eight centimeters. Yes. Okay. Eight centimeters. You can check that. We'll just find, let's just find Yalkut Yosef again, just to make sure I'm quoting him correctly. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Tent Fachim. Here it is. Tent Fachim is, is, I'm highlighting a few, is 80 centimeters. So if you buy a sukkah that's made from pipes, let's go back to our frame then this is my wall, even though I see gaps, right? There are gaps, but Lava teaches me that this is, this is viewed as a wall. That's a wall. Luckily, this is a wall. So the sukkah is kosher because as a wall over there, and as a wall over here, and a wall over here. These are the walls. The cloth, that goes over the walls, it's just nice to give you privacy. 
When I go to this sukkah, <coughs> see, their walls don't even go to the roof. They Okay, so this sukkah, I really, for their, this is cloth. If you look carefully, these are straps. They have, this is their love wood. One, two, three, four, they have, going up to there. One, two, three, four. There are poskim who say, and we'll see the Shulchan Aruch in a minute, that if these straps are very, very permanent, they're like they're solid, and they don't sway in the wind because they're drawn tightly and they're locked in with metal buckles, there are poskim who say that you can go with that. There are poskim who say you can go with that. But you get the impression from Ravadi Yosef and Osha Feinstein that they would not have gone with this. And that's why the original, or the, the companies in Israel were selling the Sukkot made from pipes. They were selling Sukkot with metal Lovud bars. This is terrific. This is a terrific Sukkot. This is a terrific Sukkot. Okay. Uh, I would say that, no, that's where, where the other picture go, that this Sukkot, Where's my Florida sukkah? This sukkah is less is less optimal. I mean, I don't I don't, I don't know who markets it, but their love is using cloth straps, and cloth isn't love because cloth sways. Now they'll tell you that well, if you draw it really really tight with metal buckles, and it's permanent. So we'll see the shochan aruch, and you'll see why Ravadi Yosef and Moshe Feinstein objected. This is the Shulchan Aruch. Asuk, I was asukas obein ha'ilanos, ilanos the fanos law. Okay, I have my sukkah, and for walls, I want to use trees. But not the fanos law. The trees are the walls. No yu chazakim, if these trees are strong. O shakash osam, v'chizek osam, v'chlote, ruach matzir menido tam tamid. And I'm not afraid that the wall, the wind is going to blow the trees down. I'm concerned that the a, 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 a usual wind will not cause them to sway. Motion, not blowing down, just having if those trees would would wave back and forth in the in a wind. That's not a wall. So why do you do? So you want your trees. And then you got bundles of straw and you tie them together so the wind can't move them. That sukkah is kosher. Al Kane, therefore, Ain Nacham, Ravad Yosef points this out. He doesn't say usr. He says it's not proper. It's not proper. It is not proper to make your all of the walls from 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 from, from curtains of linen without reeds. Reeds are rigid. If I would use bamboo poles as my lovered bars, I'd be fine. If I'm going to use cloth walls, you got to get bamboo, something stiff. Even though you cut, you tied those curtains to the frame of the sukkah very well. Why? Because if I'm looking again, let's look at this Florida sukkah. These straps in and of themselves are not rigid. They're rigid because they pull tightly on them. Well, Miss Man. Horizontal oh, I have to mute because people are talking. Um, if I'm going to use vertical bars for Lovewood, I'd have to have a bar every 24 centimeters. I would need a lot of bars. I can either get by Okay, is here. Open and share. Not cloth walls. Where's my balcony? 
get you another picture. Rabbi Yeshiv is also Tzaka. Um, had, we had the picture a second ago. I had a good picture here. I'll show you a picture of what you get. Let's explain this. Uh, here. This would be love. This is vertical love, Miss Man. Okay. Do you see that? But that's a lot of bars. So, in a, on a, first of all, if you do this on your pesset, this would be puzzle anyway because of the overhang from the roof. So you're not under the sfach, but open and share, but here, this is also vertical level. Okay, but I have, I have a bar, I don't have any gaps here of, of eight centimeters. It's simpler if I'm building a sukkah prefab, it's, it's easier to use horizontal bars. Okay, Miss Man. Okay, she sent me okay. All right. So cloth walls are a very, very big problem. A very big problem. And the people who are marketing the cloth walls with cloth lovewood straps, not that simple. It's not that simple. Um, one posek who sort of gave his approval to cloth walls is of Moshe Sternbach and his modern Musmanin. Okay. And so he has a long discussion of it. And he says, Kayam no again the People are making sukkot with cloth walls. The Shulchan says you can, his concern is not so much for the swaying that the walls might become partially detached. So me doctor, you won't pay, you won't notice. But you might beat him, hey, Dave, the neighbor's sukkah will right into the street. Oi, uh, okay. We live in um, Natanya, and there's sometimes there's very strong winds. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's something. Okay, yeah. right to the street. No, even I live in a frat, we're 900 meters. We don't get a wind like that. Anyway, so if Moshe Sternbach says, people are making Sukkot with cloth walls. Maybe the only concern is that this the cloth wall might become partially detached. But if you really fasten your cloth walls to the frame, above and below and at the sides, it's not going to detach. In the company in desire, and that's why people aren't concerned. But he says, don't avoid the cloth walls. But I would say again that cloth walls, in and of themselves, are not good. If you buy a prefab sukkah, make sure. I really, really advise this, that your sukkah frame, and where's that picture again? Has metal lovewood bars. If you have metal bars, that's your wall. And then I rock, you don't even need the cloth at all. Because these bars are the wall because of the luck of lovewood. Cloth is nice, it gives you some privacy. That's 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 cloth, and just to, uh, it's like I just like it's like it's something that's really important. Like you go there, you go you go to a restaurant, and people have made this observation. People check the tudat kashrut on sukkot, but you have to check the sukkah that you're eating in. You have to check the sukkah, and and the the, the, the sukkah is not less important than kashrut. There's a mitzvah to eat in a kosher sukkah. And you have to check what kind of lovud 
and they don't they all have cloth walls. You have to check what's the love of. Where's the love of? Are they metal bars? And this Ravad Yosef says in Yachavadat, just to his conclusion. Basikum, summing it up. In lots of machitza shall fun out sukkah masim yard shabrok between the nether top. You cannot make your sukkah from cloth walls because the, the cloth the cloth wall causes they sway in the wind. It's called machitza shalacha bar baruch in machitza. A wall that goes back and forth in the wind. That's not a wall. The machitza achim sar shall fun shall sukkah assuming stem your psalm sukkah. Even if one out of the three is cloth walls, it's puzzle. If you're making cloth walls without rigid poles, such as the rigid lovet bars, don't do that. You have to make, and the people should be made aware. Their sukkah is puzzle. Their sukkah is puzzle. Um, there's an anthology, it's called Piske Chuvot. Um, Piske Chuvot has all of the opinions. Here it is. Anam yesh kosfim shemash brakol shonim bachronim. There are those who say mish brakol mechitza shemash brakol shonim bachronim. There are those who say mish brakol mechitza shemash brakol Okay, there are all sorts of ideas. What apostles the cloth? Okay. Don't use cloth walls unless you have something rigid on three sides that's ten fachem high. And that's love. Okay, now he makes a point. Okay. He goes for ropes. Okay, and that's his kula. Uh, th that's where you see these, the Florida soak of the cloth straps. I can use ropes for lovel if I pull them tight. And just to see who supports that idea, I, I, I got a hang up for this, for the cloth wall ideas. Where'd we go? Cloth walls, shoot rough pa'alu. Okay. Okay. So we'll see. Okay, hold on. So Miss Lynn, you only Jacob. I still know background here is like the flower metal frame with a metal, with a middle metal brace. Parts are straps tied to the frame, ten tied to the frame, through the rabbinic family. Some people will go for that. I'm not saying the if you that's Rav Sternbach. Okay, not, don't go, don't go, hmm. I'm not hmm in anybody. Rav Sternbach says that it could be that there are people who say that as long as you can be absolutely sure that it's not going to detach, you're good. And this the peace gate shuvo. And based on the Rav Pa'alim, you can use ropes. Okay? He says, Chavalim. You can use ropes. So that's for your sukkah, um, Miss Lynn, the only Job. Ropes count as good as metal bars. I'm not sure if Rabbi Yosef or Rabbi Shafin would agree with that. But maybe yes, because they're specially designed not to be detached. All right, that's cloth walls. Um, just get that over with. Another halacha is okay. So let's say if you're having, if you're building a sukkah from wood. Where's my wooden sukkah? Where are you, wooden sukkah? Okay, you wooden sukkah. Obviously, you're going to put up the walls, and you're going to put up the schach. Um, I've seen this on um, some people who have uh, metal frame sukkahs. They want to get the schach on first before the walls. I want to know why they do that. 
I've seen them built that way. And that is a sort of a problem, which we'll talk about. So I'll just get to that now. You, uh, you, you, that's what I you, someone took it up already, Miss Lineal Neat Joe. You see in the backyard that there's a sukkah? Yes, it was, it was used last year and it was never taken down. Interesting. Where do you live? I'm in Silver Spring, Maryland. And why are you doing the winter? Stay warm. <laughs> what about the sukkah? <laughs> sukkah was it was uh, left up all through the winter. Uh, it's still in good shape. Remarkable. All right. All right. That's interesting. The sukkah stood up the whole year. Wow. Okay. If it works, it works. All right. I think you, you still have to read. You have to lift up the schach and put it back we'll down. Next exactly. week we'll talk about the schach. They were talking about walls. Oh. Okay. Next week is the schach. Okay. Okay. The stay up all winter. Very, very interesting. All right. So if you're not in Silver Spring, Maryland, and you take your sukkah down, and you're going to rebuild it. Alpha bishol asets shein mitzak shero shein sim l'zil. That's an idea of the sukkah. The sukkah is a built as a structure put up for shade. It doesn't have to be sh like for the shame mitzvah. If I would be, I have been. If you're, let's say, traveling in Africa and you're passing by a barn with a thatch roof, that's a sukkah. It doesn't have to be built up for a mitzvah. Ramaz says, in lasos the schach comes out of the funnels. Don't put up the schach before you build the walls. So even if you put up one wall, you're okay. 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 The what's puzzle for a sukkah conceptually? Um, it has to be there to give shade to humans. If there would, and for again, if I go to some place where they use thatch for roofing material, and someone has a warehouse where they keep, I don't know, books with a thatch roof, that schach wasn't made to give shade. That's just an enclosure for someone to keep their books dry. That's not a sukkah. It has to be the shame sale. Now, ohel has to be a structure for a person. That's a tech, interesting technical thing. So if I would go in here, where's my sukkah frame? All right, I need a structure. Okay. If I would put the schach over here, I'm going to make green. Make green. If I would start make out. Oh, that's too okay. And you can't see my green because it's against the green background. If I put up a roof before the walls, then that roof isn't really the roof of a structure. A structure means four walls or three walls. And the schach is very important that the schach is the schach, they're covering for a structure. And if it's not the covering for a structure, then it's puzzle. So first you have to have the walls, so you have the basic structure, then you put the schach on top of the walls. That's what the Ramah says. Okay? That's the Ramah. Okay? If I put up the roof before I put up the walls, that means the schach was not made for a structure, and it's becoming a structure after the fact, which is invalid. Adifanos. We put up the schach before the walls. Many posts can say it's puzzle, even bidiyevet. So 
put up the, make your make, put up your walls, put in your lovered bars, or use your lovered straps. Then put up the scarf, and then you're okay. All right. So what else is there to talk about? You can talk walls, wall for scarf. Something interesting. This man mentioned a sukkah that blew away, and because it's windy in the, in the Tanya. The sukkah has to be able to stand for a week. Now, it has to be good for a week. If it's really that windy in the Tanya, then you may, and if it's to be expected that your sukkah will, how, how often does sukkah blow away in the Tanya? How often does this happen? This is, okay, this, this was like one of the sukkot of many, and it was at the end of sukkot. And, um, oh, and the sukkot. thing is, yeah, I know that when sukkot was over, it blew away. But what we have is like we have two apartment buildings, and between them, because they're two together, uh, it chokes, it's like a wind tunnel. So yes. that's why. So, so it could be windy, but also that it has another effect. Interesting. Yeah. There is, there is a, I never thought about it. Talk about that next week. So next week we're going to talk about that when we have it. Because it is talked, but I never took it that seriously because I, I, if, I, if it never gets out windy in a frot, and bait, I never heard of a circle blowing away in a frot. And we're like the highest point, and we get some pretty serious winds. Yeah. Wind tunnel, Sukkot blow away. Okay, I'm going to write that down. Sukkot blow away. <laughs> That's an interesting question. Okay. How does it, so that's the last for a week. So Radi Yosef has this, hello, someone else said something to say? Haya, Haya wrote a, a question in the chat. Yeah, it's a second question. Here it is. Question. Oh, it's just a square metal frame with no supporting bars between the four corners, Paul, top bottom metal frame. And I was wrote to the bottom frame. Um, the current, I would, okay, Miss, yeah, okay, look. I'll be honest. Ravavad Yosef and Ramosha Feinstein would not have been happy with that at all. Mm. Ramosha Sternbach says it works. But that was then and this is now. Okay. Thank you. That okay. was then and this is now. When I was a little kid, I remember they had the first pipe sukkot. There was something called the Spiro Foundation. I was a little kid. As if they, I want to see if they still exist. Spiro Foundation. And they were they were they were, they were giving out these sukkot in America. Spiro Foundation sukkah. See if anybody. It's, it's not in Google. Uh, no. Okay, here. Good at you sell of America. Let me see what they're selling. Yes. Oh, wow. There we go. The, this is ancient. This is really an ancient thing, a voice from beyond. Let me see if I can get this. If I can get this, I'll be really, really happy. What's this? Oh, wait, now I can't find it. They say that, here it is. Wow. Oh, but it's on page 30. I have to download this page. That's a, that's what Ms. Yavitz is talking about. I remember this when I was a little kid. I'm really happy you brought this up. Wow, it was like a blast from the past. <laughs> Fourth walls. Okay. Save. Is it here now? Yes. Look, this is what Ms. Spiro remembers. I'm pretty sure of it. Open and share. Wow. I haven't, I never thought I was going to think about that in a very long time. Wow. I got to find it. Hold on. You'll see this, Ms. Spiro. And they'll remember. You'll know what I'm talking about. Here we are. It's a very big file, so it's going to take a minute to load. Okay. I have to go to the very last page. It's an advertisement. Last chance to order a prefabricated sukkah. 
You see that, Miss Yavitz? Yes, yes. That's it. Yeah. A lifetime easy to assemble portable sukkah designed by the Spiro Foundation. Yeah, just like that. And I saw their Sukkot. Okay. Only $102. Very detailed assembly sheet. We put together in 30 minutes. Boy. <laughs> okay. They 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 were selling these Sukkot. And that's why they asked of Marsha Feinstein about cloth walls. Yeah. Because they didn't have love with bars. But yeah. they were made. That was it. That's what this is what you had, Miss Yavitz. You yeah. had the Spirit Foundation sukkah. Yeah, in South Africa. And oh, this was in America. Yeah. So, so it was, so it was something stuff. similar. Yeah. Something similar. The lifetime easier. We kept this in our basement. Lifetime easier, similar portable sukkah design with the Spiro Foundation. And then they asked Marsha Feinstein, what well, about because the Machaber, when you go back to the Shulchan Aruch, it's really a very interesting point. Why does the Shulchan Aruch say we have to go back to the Shulchan Aruch? Can he not have a Here we are. In Alexander. He says, okay, to someone's talking. That's the result, yeah? I was of that. He doesn't say us, sir. He says it's not right. It might detach and won't, you won't pay attention to it. You won't notice it. So the Spiro Foundation took out the canvas had these metal eyelets and everything was like threaded together really, really solid. So it really wasn't going to detach. That's what Moshe Sternbach makes the point. It's not going to detach. If Machaber is only worried about the thing about the wall detaching, this isn't going to detach. But Rav Moshe Feinstein and Rav Avad Yosef both said they they what's also important shalot eruch matzur menat minida otam. What defines a wall is rigidity. It can't sway in the wind, and the cloth and the canvas and the Spiro Foundation wasn't pulled that tightly. That it wouldn't sway in the wind, and that was the. That's why they. That's why now in Israel, when they market these sukkot with metal pipes, again, they go for metal pipes. They have love with bars. These do not sway in the wind at all. They're rigid. The Florida sukkah example that Miss Job somehow miraculously the sukkah stands through the whole winter. I mean, I just think it is amazing. Okay, because I just think about the winters here. If that stands in the winter, wonderful. Even the schach stands there. I have to ask her, Miss Job, where'd she go? No, no, of course, of course, not the roof, not the schach. Oh. But the frame, oh, so just all frame. Metal. oh, the frame. Oh, I thought you meant oh, what's the not the frame, and then the straps, and the then strap. the canvas tent over it. All of that remained up. Oh, the canvas will stay. The straps, if they're really good, canvas will stay. And you rolled up the stuff. Okay, I mean, okay. I thought, I thought you were looking at the stuff. Though. Okay, now I feel better. All right, thank you for clarifying that. But like to get back to the sukkah has to stand for a whole week. I never saw this, an inflatable sukkah. Did anybody ever see an inflatable sukkah? Hello? Uh, no. What? It's so cute. Apparently they're they're, they're somewhere. They asked sukkot somewhere. Apparently someone's making inflatable sukkot. Are they kosher? Okay, now you might say it's not going to last the whole week. All right, and like that's the, the important idea that the wind doesn't blow it down. That's why I, I think about this man's wind tunnel in the Tanya. Mm. Was if, if, it's, if, if it's so common that those between those particular buildings, the wind just comes through in the funnel effect, it's an issue. Okay, so as what Yosef say about inflatable Sukkot. Now I've seen inflatable Sukkot. 
It's attached to an air compressor, it keeps it inflated, right? And let's say there'd be a power outage, the circle will deflate. That would be very bad. Right? That would be very bad. So do I say that this sukkah has the necessary permanence because it can't stand by itself without the comp air compressor? This author writes, Why shouldn't I say that this sukkah can't last for a whole week? Right? I mean, I must, maybe I, my sukkah, I nail together. My sukkah doesn't stand by itself. It's held together by nails and screws. Why is the air compressor, which is external to this vinyl shell, different than the wooden panels of my sukkah that are held together by screws and nails, right? Same thing. And everybody agrees that wooden sukkah is kosher. So he's inclined to say that it's kosher. Because I, I don't think the air that's holding up this sukkah is any different from the nails and screws that hold up a wooden sukkah. So that's that for to thank you for your time. Um, any questions? Thank yes, you. next week, could you look into um, sukkahs that are built on uh, windy roofs and have to be weighted down with sandbags? And um, that's it. Also, yeah, that's the and also, yeah, right. eye bolt, also an eye bolt in the concrete that was changed to an eye bolt in the concrete. That's as well. it. That's that's a very serious question, and we'll talk about that next week. Thank you. There are a lot of new issues that you brought up that I never knew yeah. were issues. Oh. So thank you. Yeah. All right. No, thank you for your time. Thank but, you. So, there's a fan the Gemara goes to a story that's the basic for when Rabbi Kiva was traveling on a boat with various Tanaim and he built a sukkah on the boat and his sukkah blew down. Ooh. And they said, so where, Where's your sukkah, Akiva? Where's your sukkah, Rabbi Akiva? The wind took it away. And that's the whole thing about there, there's windy places. Where are you doing in a windy place? How much permanence do you need in a windy place? Yeah. Okay, so thank you for your time. Very good. This, I'll you. see you all next week. Bye bye. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Bye bye. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. bye.